LDH does not verify marital status. So someone can say, I earn $20,000 and therefore I am eligible. But if, if they were married to someone making 100000 then they wouldn't be eligible. But y'all do not check marital status. There's really not a, there's no database out there to do it. Uh, but you can look at income tax returns where typically someone would list married, you know, with a with a spouse. While we're talking about that, uh, it's never been done before, but the state could seek what is called child support. Mm -hmm. So if a I'm going to use the example, if a mother makes 20,000 and her children are eligible for Medicaid because of her low salary, but the children have a father making 100000 and you could identify that because they would probably claim those Medicaid children as dependents. You could go after that father for repayment of the Medicaid premiums that the state has paid because the dad is a deadbeat. But y'all had chosen, your predecessors chose not to do that. Representative Baralt talked about uh, moving people off of Medicaid. The truth of the matter is, and studies have shown it, Medicaid and other social programs are one of the drivers of poverty. Because, let's just call Medicaid a $7,000 a year uh, benefit. And it's income-based. So if I make too much, I lose the benefit. All right? So if someone, if the cutoff, the, the <coughs> magic cutoff is 25000 right? And my employer offers me uh, an extra $200 a month, give me $2,400 a year. I can't take the raise or I have to cut my hours because I'm going to lose a $6,000 benefit. It's a benefits cliff. So programs such as Medicaid, because there's no taper off in eligibility, it's the greatest impediment uh, to uh, prosperity. Uh, I think this nation has ever known. And quite frankly, it's not just Medicaid. When you stack all the programs together, it's quite easy for somebody to have $15,000 worth of government benefits that they lose if they make a dollar too much money. Yep. And we are locking people into poverty forever because they can't afford to replace $15,000 in, in government benefits because of a, a $2,000 a year raise. Quite frankly, I don't know how you fix it, but that that is a reality that we live in and we will never prosper as a state as long as we don't have a solution. Uh, Representative Baralt uh, talked about eligibility and you guys mentioned, you know, the you're now checking. You didn't say it, but it's loan information. But I think eligibility, you ought to also try to identify not just the, the what's called the custodial parent, but the other parents. What you'll find is, and I think we've already found this, we never could do it twice because the Department of Revenue under the previous administration wouldn't cooperate. They cooperated with us one time, and then they never would again after they realized the data was so damning. Uh, go to those income tax returns. Look at them. And if, if someone, modified adjusted gross income is a household income. Not everybody in the house, but if, if you're living with your dad, look, Medicaid is disadvantageous and, uh, to marriage. It's a, if you're married, suddenly you, you, you might not be eligible. To stay unmarried, so it, it, it prompts people to not stay married. And Representative Coates mentions nursing homes. The last time I checked, we were 50th. And Representative Coates, the measure of how they do that on the federal level is bed sores. And the more bed sores you have is a direct indication you're not being taken care of. So it's very measurable, and we're last. And it's a shame, but we're last. Maybe we got up to 49th, I don't know. But the last time I checked, we were last. And when you talk about nursing homes, it's really crazy the way we pay nursing homes. We pay for empty beds. If someone has a nursing home bed and suddenly they're, they're critically ill and they go to the hospital for two months or they go to hospice somewhere, we continue to pay for that bed even though we're not using it. And just so you know, most of the, uh, most of the nursing home patients are what's called dual eligible. They have Medicare that covers the hospital stay, Medicaid covers the 
uh, the, the nursing home bed. There's no incentive to take care of those bed sores because they're going to get paid whether they there or in the hospital. So we are create a situation where there's not really an incentive. If I told the nursing home, as soon as that person leaves because they got bed sores all over their body to go to the hospital to be treated, you're not getting another dime. Guess what they would do? It makes sure they had less bed sores. But that's a policy change that needs to take place with you guys. Simply say, if they're not laying in the bed tonight, you're not getting paid tonight. And guess what? I bet quality of care goes way up. But you got to be willing to take the heat for doing it.